profile said he was into psychogeography, and I thought that was the bomb. All the other fellas on the site just seemed to like Led Zepp and slasher films, and uploaded wacky photos of themselves giving thumbs up next to extreme sport posters. So I arranged to go on a derive with Jeff, and we met beside the museum's mirror ball to set our parameters sticking to the shade and stopping at every junction to listen to the voices beneath the pavement. We looked up to the tops of buildings and we looked down to the ground and we looked sideways at each other and we discovered all kinds of things about our place in the city. If it wasn't for the matching Ramones t-shirts from Topshop, we could have really gone somewhere. But that's like girls ending up with the same M&S coat as their mothers. The algorithm's all wrong. Thank you. Everyone has a favourite spot. Sylvia likes to sit on the front row at the cinema. I discover this on our second date when she marches straight down the unsettling slope. It's not somewhere I'd pick, but I'm not consulted. I'd never even sat on the front row until I met Sylvia. I like to position myself halfway along a row, halfway from the back, safe middle of ground. Near enough the exit, in the event of a fire or a sudden urge to pee. Far enough from the projector to not hear it click and whir. Sylvia likes the front row, she says, because it makes her feel part of the action. All I feel are my ears bleeding and the progressive nagging of my neck. And I can't concentrate on the film once I've noticed the little holes in the screen where the light is sucked through. Sylvia has made me sit to her left because she's decided I'm right-handed. She decided this on our first date in a summer evening beer garden when she watched how I pick up my drink and light my cigarettes. She decided correctly. Sylvia tells me a right-handed man should always sit on the left-hand side of a woman in the cinema so he can grope her effectively when the lights go down. I assume this means she's given me the nod to put my hand between her legs. I assume wrong. Sylvia hisses, you can only do that on the back row. And she doesn't sit on the back row, ever. So much for feeling part of the action. We wait for the credits to roll, then leave in silence. There is no third date. Thank you. electric. The first time it happens is a Wednesday before work. I'm about to straighten my hair when a neon thread crackles into life and reaches for the plug's pins, catching me by surprise. Surprises are good. I start leaving switches on, sweeping my toes close by sockets and feeling the surge of energy pull at my core. Everywhere I look, I see networks of bright blue veins and the walls pulsing with life. Every time I flick on the kettle or dim the lights, my temperature rises a notch and my breathing picks up its pace. It tingles and teases, tempting me to stick my fingers in fixtures and fuse boxes. We need to connect. The craving for bigger, better buzzes controls my mind and my body. I take to standing beneath pylons for stimulation. The air is supercharged and fizzing. Ions zap my skin and the mammoth structures hum with potential. I want the ultimate high so I start climbing. 
I get up quickly and gaze at the ruby red beacons of the city's towers. The power lines purr in my ear tantalisingly and I reach up, thrilled and throbbing. Thank you.